Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So let's start out with the North Korea story here. I thought I'd give you this picture. This is one that I've shown before. This is the night sky over North Korea. You can see here, this is Pyongyang and uh, that's the capital of North Korea. You can see China to the north and you can see uh, South Korea here and I think this may be Thailand uh, Japan somewhere up there. Point being uh, that North Korea doesn't even have enough technological prowess to light up their night sky uh, that anybody could believe. Oh, and by the way, for you flat earthers here, here's your uh, supposedly your ISS uh, shield. Don't, I don't know if this picture is fake or not. Uh, this is clearly a fisheye lens. Um, for one thing, it's not a it's not a consistent curve here that we're looking at. I don't know what we're looking at there. Well, I know what we're looking at. We're looking at a fisheye lens. But uh, if you took this curve here and made it into a ball, the ball would be too big. So more nonsense from NASA. But I do think the picture is real. They've just done some things to it. Uh, but I mean, the difference between China and South Korea and North Korea. North Korea is a third world backwater um, just not a threat to anybody except for their own people and you know to think that these stories have legs it just shows you how silly all this nonsense is I tend to agree with Eric Dubay although I think he's an agent for other reasons but I do tend to agree with Eric Dubay and many of the other flat earth people who say that nuclear weapons are a hoax they're not real I've definitely looked at the footage. I've shown you those in past videos. I've looked at the footage of the tests, the old U.S. black and white footage, and those are clearly models. Uh, whether or not they have any kind of bombs like that, they may, but we certainly didn't see any of those in those videos. Those videos were models. It's clear. Anybody who knows anything about physics can look and see that those buildings weren't real buildings. They were little little toy models uh, that they blew up with firecrackers and things like that. So um, uh, this thing, I can't imagine this thing turning into anything but just uh, something that goes straight into the memory hole. Uh, I am 99% convinced that uh, all this noise about North Korea is going to turn out to be absolutely nothing. So what is the reaction of the markets? Well, we can look at the markets. Uh, if you go to crude oil on the five minute, you know, you might say, oh, wow, there's a lot of action there. Look at that. Uh, it went down from 49.50. But if you pull out to the hourly, you can see it's just absolutely nothing. Nothing going on in oil. Uh, what about stocks? Well, the Dow Jones coming off of a record above 22,000 now at about 21.9 no nothing happened in stocks gold gold's gonna jump right we'd expect gold to go crazy uh, with uh, the world on the brink of uh, some kind of war no nothing nothing going on with gold little bit of an uptick silver uh, has kind of recovered from its latest smackdown you can see uh, just outright bizarre behavior in the silver chart uh, so we're kind of back up to the rolling over effect that we were in um, but uh, you know bizarre spikes up and down you can see this one here uh, just a bizarre candlestick this huge smack down here rally here we're s still sitting about the same price so as far as the markets are concerned this is a big yawner doesn't mean anything uh, so I would put this one on ignore until you know we see something much more serious coming out of North Korea rather than just this idle nonsense which by the way we've heard this nonsense about North Korea and they're trotting out this threat uh, to me it's something akin to what the US has done with Cuba this constant enemy that they have on their border. Of course they have a military base on the same island but they have this this enemy that we have to watch out for so uh, don't believe a word of it. Let's look at cryptocurrencies here. 
Uh, Bitcoin is at 3358 with Bitcoin Cash at 312. That gives us a combined Bitcoin price of 3,600 and uh, almost 3,700, $3,650. That's $650 above that old high the Bitcoin hit uh, when it was at that 3,003. You can see right there. Uh, it just blasted through it, kept going. Market total market cap, uh, fifty-four billion dollars. With uh, adding in the uh, Bitcoin Cash, get, gives us a uh, six, a good even sixty billion dollars, which is more than fifty percent total market cap, which is coming in at a hundred and eighteen billion. If you remember, our old high was a hundred and thirty billion, so it's real easy to get through that could happen in a day uh, it could happen overnight and uh, if you remember my prediction was that we could easily see a trillion dollars in uh, in market cap for all cryptocurrencies and that's there are some that are off the board right now uh, if you haven't listened to Bix Weir he does now he's doing kind of daily sort of updates on his YouTube channel and I like, uh, I don't agree with Bix and everything, but he comes up with a lot of interesting stuff. He does a lot of covering the ICO. So if you get a chance, listen to Bix Weir's uh, YouTube channel. And he talks quite a bit about cryptocurrency. So uh, we could get that move uh, towards a trillion dollar market cap for cryptocurrencies. Would not surprise me a bit. I think there was an announcement today that uh, Fidelity is going to start tracking a Bitcoin price index with their retirement funds. That's crazy. Can you imagine? Uh, anecdotally, I just happened to speak with one of my neighbors in the neighborhood here, and I was talking about Bitcoin. I've talked to Bit, uh, people about Bitcoin for years now, and uh, I'm just trying to explain it. person had never heard of it, didn't know what it was, couldn't comprehend it when I explained it, even in the most simple terms. I think you could still pick a hundred people and you'd be lucky to buy, buy, uh, find five that had heard of Bitcoin. So um, that's not a bubble when you can't find anybody who's heard of something. That's definitely not a bubble. Uh, I am not yet ready to say that we're not on that one on that track for that one trillion dollar market cap. So I want to talk about this Google story. This is fascinating to me. This is just a uh, such an interesting story because uh, basically what happened was this kid who works at Google he put out a memo on diversity basically uh, oh, they're calling it a screed they're calling it all this stuff but really what happened was uh, all you can watch the entire interview with Jordan Peterson here I'll link it uh, but what happened was this kid was went to mandatory diversity training and you know what that's like if you've ever been in corporate America basically uh, the white Christian men are evil <laughs> and uh, everybody else in the world is good uh, and uh, there's they're being oppressed by these evil patriarchal white Christian men and so you can see here at the enemy incarnate this kid this kind of goofy looking nerd kid is the enemy incarnate you know and uh, so he went to one of these and he talks about it in the interview secret diversity seminars where everything was in secret and of course Jordan Peterson is uh, this evolutionary psychologist I already covered him before just a few videos ago with this issue of uh, the Scandinavian countries where the more socially progressive they become the more diverse they become in their gender roles uh, there's four women out of five are the nurses and and uh, four men out of five are the engineers they just they go more towards what they want to do and the diversity police find that absolutely shocking that there could actually be some kind of sex differences so this kid wrote a memo to the internal feedback group basically you know supposedly they tell you in corporate America they have open door policies on all this stuff so the kid said okay well they must have an open door policy and he says a number of times that he was naive but he just replied back saying well I'm just not seeing this based on the science here uh, we have 
good reasons for account for the differences between male and female choices in the engineering occupations, etc. And as an engineer, a company that has a lot of engineers, we really need to have an honest debate about this. Of course, it just raised a firestorm and uh, a lot of women threatened to not come to work unless this guy got fired. Of course, he got fired the next day. And he, this is this interview with Jordan Peterson. Now, it's interesting because he's, I'm playing this part because you can see that he was reluctant to talk to any of the mainstream media because he's wise enough to know what they uh, plan for him. But let's listen to this and then I'll comment again. Yeah, they definitely support me, but they, they don't really know what I should do from here. They, they don't want me to you know just go to a ton of news corporations and do all these interviews and stuff. And because they just want to twist whatever I say towards their agenda too. It's, it's not really clear what I should be doing. Yeah, well, there's certainly no shortage of people that want to talk to you. I mean, I've been contacted by four or five journalists who would like to speak with you. Um, we can talk about that afterwards. I can let you know who they are. But um, yeah, well, you've got, a, you've got a conundrum on your hands. You know, I mean, you're, you're, a, you're a very straightforward person, and you're obviously not grinding any axe, at least not in any obvious way. So my suspicions are that talking to the right people could be of substantial use to you, but I guess it also depends on what it is that you want. I mean, and that's something we could talk about. Now, you've, you've, you've rattled up the cages of a fair number yeah. of people. Okay, so he's going to talk about the fact that uh, obviously this kid's going to have a lot of offers from conservative, uh, you know, news outlets. But this uh, this story, and you'll have to listen to the whole interview, it just shows you uh, the term that the kid used was echo chamber. The Google is an echo chamber. And I can tell you, because I run our public blog, and the primary source of revenue was Google AdSense. And fighting with Google and their metrics, and, you know, and now what's coming out, uh, because more people are talking, apparently Breitbart is going to be doing a, a release on this, and some of the engineers are talking that Google is rigging their metrics. And I've known this for a very long time because uh, they targeted uh, the, the uh, alternative media for uh, revenue drops. That was one of the reasons why we had to move away from YouTube public uh, platform and uh, public blog and move to a member site because of acts by Google and uh, we knew what they were doing but we could not prove what they were doing and uh, there's no question in my mind that there is an agenda there is a uh, politically driven agenda to defund the critics of the left and the left is in control of these major major social media organizations including Google Facebook Twitter um, the list goes on and on and on and uh, Amazon even and these groups uh, they have they are echo chambers uh, there is no discussion uh, and I know this because personally uh, I actually debated this topic when I was in law school I debated this very topic and in fact I was the only person my partner ended up quitting and I had to do it on my own because I was the only person willing to even espouse these principles. And I remember, I just so happened to have a constitutional law professor who was a conservative, but I remember when I was giving my presentation and I was doing my um, uh, finale, basically, because it was a debate, so we're going back and forth, and uh, I was uh, giving my final presentation and I mentioned the fact that uh, these social justice warriors and their deconstructionist theories basically amount to telling people, especially telling traditional wives who are women who choose to stay at home and raise kids rather than have a career, they're basically telling them they can't do that. Because if you break down the statistics, you find that the difference between male and female career uh, not only types of careers, but also uh, time spending careers and pay uh, are fully explainable 
by choices that women make to be homemakers. So what these leftists are saying is that uh, it, that can't be allowed, that women cannot be allowed to choose those things. And when I said that, uh, there, there was practically a riot. Uh, there was no more speaking after that. They had to practically pull me out of there because they were going to hang me up. So this, this has been going on for a very, very long time. This was in the 90s. So that tells you how long ago uh, that this was that I was facing, as a conservative, I was facing 99% left-wing ideologues. This has been going on on our college campuses for decades. Now it's in our corporations. These people are very, very dangerous people. Um, if you think that they would stop at just firing you, uh, rather than throwing you in prison or even executing you, you're crazy. These people would go that far. They're ideologues. They're dangerous. Hopefully, though, I think that this story it, will go viral and uh, some of these companies are going to begin to be exposed. I have a lot of hope for the alternative media that's based on the alternative currencies, specifically ones we have... Uh, Zcash, which is privacy-based, so you, you can't see who's sending who the money. That's a really important part of it. Uh, but we also have um, new social media type of coins like Steemit. Uh, here's Steam down here at 41. We've got library credits, which uh, give people the ability to share content. And, uh, you know, th these are ways we can get around the censorship that uh, these these mega corporations are doing as they've been taken over by these left-wing ideologues and uh, that's just another way that cryptocurrencies can benefit us benefit us uh, in this battle and we'll talk to you next time